Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and I'm back with another video. Um, and today I thought we'd uh, discuss another size controversy within Star Trek because I'm nothing if not original with my uh, video ideas. This is mostly uh, a response to um, a video Trek Yards made uh, about the Dominion battleship and a sort of it's a, a counterpoint to that um, you might be wondering why do you argue about you know size so much well because size matters don't let anyone tell you different um, that being said bigger isn't always better and I think this is best illustrated with Star Trek and with our example today the Dominion battleship uh, and the associated size controversy although I didn't really think it was much of a controversy um, so, for those of you who aren't sort of aware, so Trek Yards made a video about the Dominion battleship, and they put it at, in terms of size, um, I think it's maximum size, 4,500 meters, which is ludicrously large. It is ludicrously large. Um, it's definitely not that, and I'll explain why, and I'll also explain why the size that it is makes the most sense, rather than... 4,500 meters. Um, apart from the fact that it actually matches the scale of other things. Um, so, I mean, first, the first issue to kind of address is that um, it sometimes gets confused with the battle cruiser. It's understandable from a distance; they do look quite similar, um, but they are very different. The battleship is very bulky and very uh, kind of sort of straight and uh, bulky and tanky looking whereas the cruiser is much more elegant um, and I'll explain like why that perhaps is and why it's not perhaps a very original design compared to the battle cruiser and the uh, fighter um, but so first taking it through the evidence so um, firstly in the first episode it's featured in Valiant which is a very good episode by the way um they say it is tw the there is dialogue in that episode that says it's twice the size of a galaxy class which sounds about right so you're looking about um 1200 to 1300 meters roughly um that is rough but it's a good indication and certainly uh you wouldn't just say something that is 4500 meters is twice the size of the galaxy class you're saying it would be much more than that where this then gets into problems uh, is with the fly-through, um, which they do, sort of Star Wars style, which is, I'll admit, uh, a bit silly. It's a bit absurd. And um, so this is from an article on Ex Astra Scientia, and he says that, well, from that, from that, you're looking at... Um, no less than 3,300 meters, uh, which is very large and definitely more than just twice the size of a galaxy class. That's I'm not going to going to do the maths, but it's a lot bigger. Um, he then says that okay, that's like that would be at best. Um, you could argue that it was perhaps smaller. Uh, 1,500 meters, but then he argues, well, then they'd have to have some astonishing luck to pass through. And I would agree, I would say, this is done for dramatic effect and is somewhat jumping the shark. Uh, it's asking us to suspend our disbelief within asking us to suspend our disbelief. So make of that what you will. Um, then further evidence really indicates in uh, what you leave behind, you then look at uh, you're looking at about 1600 meters. But then, a lot of people say the so th first you have the kind of the shots in the main bit of the battle, uh, well they're sort of uh, not quite at Cardassia yet, and that it looks about 1500 meters. That's fine. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Then you get the absurd, and I mean absurd shot, um, 
in orbit of Cardassia, where it basically dwarfs the Breen ship and it dwarfs the Dominion battle cruiser. This is where the 4,500 meter um, ship comes from. Now, you you, you may rem you may have seen this uh, on um, a uh, well-known sci-fi size comparison chart, which compares all of the different ships throughout all of science fiction and this comes in as one of the smaller ones but amongst Star Trek 4500 meters it's that's still pretty big it's nearly of a size with stuff like the uh, Voth city ship um, of a size with a Borg cube it's ludicrous is what is what it is and I don't believe that that is true, but that's the size that Trek Yards went with, um, because apparently that was how it was scaled at CG. Um, really, I would argue it really is anomalous um, work by the effects guys that creates this absurdly large ship, but it doesn't really make sense. Um, it it doesn't really make sense for what it is. Given given that the dialogue indicates it's at least fifteen hundred meters, I think it just makes sense that that's what it actually is. Um, okay, so you know, because I would I would argue that dialogue um, trumps visuals in terms of canon. Now I say that someone will probably be able to contradict me on that there's always going to be contradictions <clears throat> that's just inevitable um, but I think as a general rule dialogue does kind of uh, when you're using sort of approximations like that it's fairly um, reliable uh, where dialogue I wouldn't say is reliable is when you look at when they are very clearly spouting random numbers so just because they say deck 29 does not mean that ship has 29 decks it's whatever sprung to the writer's head at the time um, and that's how you get weird stuff where they s the ship has more decks than it should do um, or if uh, distances and times um, and speeds relative are arbitrary they're whatever they are for dramatic effect uh, and they're not consistent um, so in that way, don't trust the writers. But if you want size approximations, if they say, that's crikey, that's twice the size of a galaxy class, you can probably rely on it. Um, that's what I would argue. Um, and also, why would they build a how? How do you build a 4,500 meter ship? Um, and why? Why, when the biggest thing you're encountering is the Dideridex class, which is 1,341 meters, and that's quite an old ship anyway uh, by this point, so why would you need to build something that ludicrously large? Uh, you don't. If you say, oh, well, it's to transport troops, well, uh, if you watch the video by E.C. Henry, he does a very good uh, breakdown of how absurdly huge the Enterprise D is at 600 odd meters um, now you think 600 meters well particularly compared to a lot of sci-fi that's not big you know compare that to Imperial Star Destroyers and Super Star Destroyers and everything it's not big you're quite right um, but he then uh, puts a thousand people sort of in a square and puts it on the hull of the Enterprise D and we see that really yeah, that's not much and you definitely wouldn't fill the Enterprise with it. You'd maybe fill a deck or two decks, um, sort of within living space, but the ship's got to be pretty empty, is what he speculates. And I'd agree, although I think that there are explanations. I think while there's probably maybe a crew of a thousand, I suspect in terms of civilians and everything, um, and scientific uh, groups and everything, it's probably a lot more. Um, because uh, it will, uh, Andrew Probert does, does say it's designed for at least 4,000 
uh, so it definitely could comfortably do that. So in which case, okay, so how much do you think you could accommodate in a Dominion uh, battleship at 1500 meters? You could accommodate a lot of troops. It's twice the size of the Galaxy class. The Galaxy class can comfortably fit uh, 4000, comfortably. Um, so at the very least you're looking at then 8000 at least but also the ship's much bulkier and stockier so that's probably even more internal volume plus you're not really worried about um, keeping them comfortable so you could probably get I reckon yeah 16,000 you could get 16,000 on board no trouble I don't think uh, certainly you'd be cramming them in but 16,000 easily and that is plenty for a planetary invasion force, although is it? Now that's another topic I'll talk about. Um, but I don't think there's any problem in terms of space. Um, now I'm going to get into also then, okay, so why do they build this battleship and why does it look so much like the cruiser? Um, we don't see them at all before the war, at all. Um, so it's probably likely that they were built specifically for the war. At least that's how I've always understood it. And we see them in the late war. After after the Romulans have joined. So my analysis of this is the the Romulans joined the war and they attack with these with their De Duridex warbirds. These are nonetheless huge powerful warships and are just gonna eat up anything that's not fast enough to flee. You know, yes, okay, it can probably be overwhelmed by um, Jem'Hadar fighters, but if it's got good cover by smaller ships, that shouldn't be a problem. And your Dominion battle cruiser, about 600 meters long, it's not going to survive. It's not going to have a chance against this thing, um, and certainly not groups of them, because uh, the Dodorodex is designed as a capital ship killer. Um, so you want something to counter it. So then you're going to build something basically a similar size, if not maybe a little bit bigger. And it turns out a little bit bigger, but overall is roughly the same size. Uh, and it does what the Dodorodex does, but meaner. Um, the ship is also very heavily... Uh, the Dominion battleship also very heavily emphasizes torpedoes. We see when it attacks, it is mostly just torpedo volleys because um, that's what's in at that point because the, you've got the Akira class that's doing that a lot as well so that pa they perhaps wanted to work that in as well have a big sort of torpedo gunship uh, around the, ba around the uh, battle space so then that makes sense if it's designed to counter the Dodorodex which given when it emerges given when we first encounter it it probably was then it's probably going to be a reasonably similar size the Dodorodex is around a uh, 1300 meters so 1500 is it makes much more sense than 1000 uh, than uh, 4500 uh, which is very much I think just an error of the effects guys it's one shot um, very much like um, very much like the Burrell the uh, bird of prey controversy where um, there's that 600 meter variant. I think that's just an, a trick of the effects. I don't think that's uh, really there. Um, I, it's not. It's not really consistent enough because it's only three appearances, and the rest of the appearances, they're pretty consistent. So, you know, I wouldn't say. Um, you know, in terms of where it fits in in the strategic picture of the Dominion War, this very much reminds me, if you ask me, of the um, German uh, heavy tanks, the King Tiger and the Panther and everything, uh, where they start coming across these heavy, these heavier designs. So in this case, it's the Dodorodex, um, and they try and build something to counter it, and then actually they end up fighting the, ma but actually the majority of what they're fighting is smaller and lighter anyway you know, actually most of what they're fighting are going to be uh, Federation Excelsiors, Klingon Vochers. Uh, this thing is really too big and bigger than it needs to be. Uh, and the result is I don't think they ever built many. 
Um, the the Romulans dedicate everything to building de Duridexes. They probably have a really good number. I don't. Given how infrequently we see this in the show, I would say there's probably no more of them than there are galaxy classes. Now, how many galaxy classes Starfleet has? That's a question for another time. Um, but those are just my thoughts. Uh, what are your guys? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.